Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Radamic. Berto Willis, your host. Thank you so kind of being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today, as usual, as usual, as usual. Anyway, folks, how was your weekend? I trust all is well. Eric Hayes is in the house. Mer- uh, second time. He was over there at KPFT as well. Melanie Keelan is in the house. Welcome. Yvette Avery Herod is in the house. Bridge MCP is in the house. AVQ, pa, Senor Michael Rodnan is in the house. Who else is in the house? Make yourself known. Anyhow, Bridge MCP says, kill 14,000 people in Iran. The parliament decided to execute all the participants of the protest. Iran plans to execute all protesters. People who protested in the streets of the country are going to be executed in Iran. They can kill more than 14,000 people. This decision was made by the Iranian parliament 227 to 290. Parliament members voted for this decision. The adopted resolution aids to teach participants the opposition demonstrations is harsh lesson. We, the people, elected officials, call on the representatives. I didn't get all of it, I don't think. All right, let's see. You know what's so interesting about that? I read that article. I want to see them execute 14 thousand people in iran you want to see a country comes into destruction again you can only dominate people long enough but when you're you know if you're if you're killing 14 million people that means you're killing your cousin at some point you're killing your cousin your aunt your 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 daughter Uh, it, it reaches a point where it's not sustainable so they can talk as much as they want to kill these people. That's a propaganda measure by the by these guys to stop the to stop the protesting. It won't work. The kids are going to go out there and say, "What are you going to do? Kill all of us? Are you going to kill all of us?" And the thing about it is, like I said, eventually you're bringing in the kids of the people who are officials, etc. So no, nah, that ain't gonna happen, Bridge. Uh, Lee Grant is in the house. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing today? Uh, Michael Rudnick says he's listening from away. I guess that means we don't have his knowledge, uh, knowledgeable pieces, but Bridge MCP has given us some as well. All right. Dolly Parton gets $100 million from Jeff Bezos to spend on charity. I read that. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I, you know, you, you know, there's something about philanthropy that gets to me right i want to know how you guys feel about this hey robin davenport i i am happy i am happy that these guys are giving away their money uh hey bruce pollard welcome aboard i'm happy that these guys are giving your money but but there's just something obscene to me because let me tell you how i see it and i want you to tell me if you see it this way as well um. Yeah, and, and first of all, what Michael Rodden just said make a lot of sense. He says, philanthropy always comes with tax breaks, which defeats the point. And that's my point, but it's a bit more subtle. These guys, if somebody came and pick your pocket, they took a, they, let's say you only need $10 a month to live. And they picked your pocket. They took out, a hundred, a thousand dollars out of your pocket, but you really don't need that thousand dollars. You only need ten dollars to live, right? And then you meet this nice person who says, "You know what? I'm going to start giving you ten dollars a month." And you just think this person is a nice person, but it's the person who picked your pocket. You see, I look at Jeff Bezos as a pickpocket and that when he gives away some money, yes, uh, you're right, running that he gets a tax break, but still he may be giving away some real money that he picked the pockets of everybody else for. So I, you know, it, 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 is, a th- it is a thing where the wealthy then earn their money. They use the economic system that we have a fraudulent economic system, an economic system with the hell of an aberration. And then they can seem benevolent as they donate money to charity. Oh, it's so sweet. We cut your taxes that you own. And people say, well, look, they're paying so much more taxes anyway than the average citizen. Yeah, because they use a lot more resources too. And what are the resources they use? The human resources that we educated. 
the, the, the infrastructure that we use because all the infrastructure used by their employees and others are built by us. It's a paradigm shift in the thought process that I'm really trying to attain here. It's a paradigm shift in the thought process. We have been indoctrinated into worshiping the Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates of the world. My goal is to unindoctrinate us from seeing worth where it does not really exist in the degree that it exists. Because Jeff Bezos and, uh, and the owner of Twitter, Musk, they're not deserving of the wealth they have. I know to some that may seem like wealth envy. It is not. I am actually on your side saying that a lot of, a lot of what was taken from you is what they have. And I wish more of us could unindoctrinate our minds to see that. All right, let's see. Eric Hayes says, activists have lambasted delegates to this year's United Nations Climate Conference as hypocrites for traveling to the confab in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, by private plane. Real good message to the uh, world, huh? For a climate conference contributed to pollution and talk about world realignment with policy and everyone else but government officials sounds like a good stuff. Um, I don't know. Maybe they could get their own ponies, you know? I don't know. Eric also says, incompetent people, we are in for, sorry, these people have no answer and got lucky with splitting ballots on voting day. All right, here's the funny thing about it, right? The Republicans were so concerned in Harris County, Texas, that straight line voting, in other words, if you go ahead and hit one button that says, I want to vote for all Democrats, that they will definitely lose Harris County because... Democrats are too lazy to go down and pick everybody that they want to vote for. Then they are assuming also that, you know, they give all the churches, evangelical churches, give all these folks that vote here, the evangelical folks, a cheat sheet. So they go into the ballot box and you see them, the guy next, the guys on both of my side when I was voting, they had their cheat sheet, they took it out. And they start pushing buttons for the people to vote for. Hmm. So they thought that Democrats wouldn't do that. Well, they got their ass handed to them. I told Eric Hayes that Lina Hidalgo was going to win. Because we know the work that we are doing in Harris County. And we know the alignment of Harris County. That a charlatan gave her... $600,000 and other crooks gave her $500,000 to to, uh, Mueller wasn't going to allow them to beat the people. I said the same with the judges. In fact, on Politics Done Right, we made sure to educate a few as well that the lies they were telling on na- on on local TV about the the the, the, the elections and ab- ab- about the crime, etc., was all wrong. So we educated our people. So what you had going to the voting booth was puppets and educated people who knew not to listen to Mattress Max and the lies that they were telling. And in the process, Harris County stayed with the people it needed to stay with. Eric Hayes, one of our great followers here, love you, Eric. He was convinced that we liberals, we progressives are going to get our ass handed to us on election day. Instead, brother Eric, I hope you're holding your ass very well in your hands, sir. I'm just playing with you, Eric. You know I love you. But I just had to tell you that. We told you, but the problem is also with, uh, let, me, let me tell you the problem about gullibility. How many times does your people have to lie? Do your people have to lie to you? They lie to you about polls. They lie to you about the likely direction of an election. I have been telling you since the inception of this election what was going to happen more than likely. I wrote 
letters. I wrote newsletters so you can see the hard copy that I've sent. I, so you don't see that I'm saying, oh, I, I, I just jump on the bandwagon now. I've been telling you what the outcome of this election was likely to be. And it wasn't that I knew anything that others shouldn't have known. It's that the media was paid to lie to you. Your media was paid to lie to you and you believed them. Since, again, once again, we've been correct, you would think that you would give us a bit more respect in saying, well, I guess if, you, if you're constantly hitting the numbers appropriately, maybe we should listen to you a bit more. Eric, don't you think? Lee, Lee Grant wants me to know that the Chronicle is going to investigate Harris County. Please go ahead, do it. When you don't have anything to hide, you don't mind being investigated, right? And as long as you pay the cost, though. Uh, Egberto Willis, yeah, where he just did this to Dolly. If he did to Dolly's uh, way, no one would know about it. Exactly. There you go. Bridge, it's amazing, isn't it? Daniel Egdo says, not going to happen in Iran. Have you uh, so soon forgotten the 20th century Stalin killed 20 million? It can happen, but you treat it as flippant manner that is curious. No. I know that people would kill. After all, during slavery, a lot of the people who uh, were rebellious in America were killed by the slave master's police. The slave master sent the police to kill all those people who tried to get their freedom. So, on, you know, uh, uh, Iran wouldn't behave unlike we behaved when we tried to put down those who were seeking their freedom. So, uh, you know, Daniel, you're right about that. The difference, though, is that we have communication we didn't have during slavery days. So even though the Iranian people... Or rather, the Iranian, the savage Iranian government uh, would likely have behaved like the savage slave owners and their police in this country. It likely will not happen because of today's technology. Because when the slave police and all these guys were killing people left and right who were seeking their freedoms, there was no cameras and no mass mailings to actually let folks know the evil that lived within. There's your answer. Eric says, change the freaking tax code if you don't like it, otherwise live with the rules. No, uh, uh, we have tried to change the tax rule, but these guys are, have bigger money, so we got to do it slowly. Uh, you must... You must listen via Twitter to hear some rich words. Ah, a nice one. Nice one, brother. Robert Davenport says, I am generally unimpressed when people give away the ill-gotten spoils of our out-of-control capitalism. <laughs> Daniel, you hit the nail on the head. I'm not Daniel. Robert, you hit the nail on the head. Robert Davenport. Daniel Ledo says, it is a paradigm shift for sure. Unfortunately, the shift Egberto advocates for is an evil ideology that enslaved folks. No, 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 no. Capitalism was the thing that enslaved black folk. Capitalism are, is the thing that is enslaving Daniel Ledo right now. But it, they are so efficient at it that Daniel does not realize that he is a slave. Like, I am a slave of a system. But keep watching, brother Daniel. I think you will get it in the long run. All right, Eric Hayes says, Egberto, 6,400 votes over the number who voted in the elections. Huh, what is happening? Oh, my God. We have a tabulation error that happens every single time. 6,400 votes unaccounted for. What percentage of the vote total is it? That is a standard error. Continuing. Uh, British MCP says Jeff Bezos give $100 million and is laying off 10,000 people before the holidays. I wonder why he gave the money now. Is it so that the benevolence can go over the, the threat? He is the capitalist threat to our employment? Huh. They, they're still making a ton of money, but it's not enough. So they must lay off. Eric Hayes says Lena cheats and tried to take $11 million in COVID money and got caught. No, she didn't. That's, that's a spin. But again, you would believe it because you'd believe anything. 
All right. Lee Grant says, if Western countries and Western culture have to pay for climate change, they should at least give, get some credit for inventing the technology and institution that they created the modern world. Absolutely not. The modern world was not created. The technology in the modern world was not created by Western culture. Brother Lee Grant, let's get educated here, okay? I love you. Let's get educated. Western culture is a great absorber of others' technology and to capitalize on it. That is not saying Western, Western people don't have technologies that they've created themselves, but we can go from technology to technology, from the cotton gin to many other devices created in, uh, that created and patented here, that was created elsewhere, that was developed elsewhere. We just brought it in. So let's not sit back and talk about Western culture being the bastion of innovation. Western culture is the bastion of capitalization and also the bastion of keeping others down militarily and thus economically. We can go at it if you want, Brother Grant. You have to remove the fallacies you hear from, the, from, from, the, uh, from these people who would like you to be a racist, from these people who would like you to think there's something special about Western, tech, a Western so, uh, society other than other societies. All societies are great. A lot of Western society came out of Egypt. A lot of Western society came out of Africa. A lot of Western society came out of China and other Asian countries. We are just better at multiplizing. We can take a lot, we can steal a lot from others and make it our own. We still do it. So, sir, apology I'm waiting for by trying to make the assumption that Western technology is the bastion of all that's good and that somehow the others didn't have other things to contribute as well. Because capitalism allowed to be unregulated invariably results in wealth divide that creates widespread poverty, Daniel Edo doesn't see the chains that it entails. Well, like they say, I rather have you, I rather have your mind in chains than to have your body in chains. A mind in chains can work for me. A body in chains cannot work at all. And that is what we have to preach, Brother AVQ. That is what we have to preach, Brother Davenport. We have got to bring our brothers and sisters. We've got to bring our Ledos in the fold. We've got to bring the Ledo. Uh, 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 replying to Lee Grant, Ledo says, Egberto, the Marxist, has no tear down Western culture in order to replace the paradigm. I don't have to tear down Western culture. I am in Western culture. But I also know that Western culture borrows from every other culture. Peggy Lopez says, Northwestern University studied women and diethylamine uh, palate used to strengthen plastics. A reproductive toxicant banned under European law in 2015, still used in many consumer goods in the United States. Bridge MCP says, we aren't supposed to talk about bond anymore per Egberto. I am ignoring his bond stuff. Ashley Willies, hey baby doll. Our Western society is starting to feel like code for white society, but our society is a mosaic. Corazón mía, mi hermosa hija, you are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. We are a mosaic, and we have to admit and admire that all of us bring a lot to the table. Peggy Lopez says, we write to birthers, ban chemicals that cause women to need a medically necessary abortion. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, we'll write to, anyway, hey, uh, Peggy Lopez, I hope you got my email. Please check. Eric Hay says uh, to Robert that Harris County will be worse period violence will continue due to policy. That's crap, but I won't go there. Uh, Paravera AVQ says you have to wonder about the rights of session with Western culture. Dog whistle. That's what my daughter just said, AVQ. That's what my daughter just put in the feed. I tell you. Deborah Moyer says, Hey, Egberto, hola. You need to market a critical thinking course online. Can't believe all I'm learning from you. 
Oh, my sweet, sweet Deborah Moyers. Thank you so kindly. Thank you so kindly. Thank you so kindly. I'm going to read something to you guys because I, how many of you got my Substack newsletter today? If you got my Substack newsletter today, just say got it in the, in the, in the, in the um, mail because I hope you guys are all on my Substack newsletter. I sent one out, but whatever the case is, I, I wanted to um, read a little portion about it given what Deborah Moyers just said. I want to read a piece of my Substack because this is why I love my peeps. Okay? This is why I love my peeps. I want to read you something uh, because this is how I felt. I had you haven't looked. Okay, I sent uh, I sent my I sent my Substack out this morning. And I said that there are two things in the Substack. The basic tenet of the Substack was, and let me put it here on screen. The basic tenet of my Substack to this this time was that I had a great weekend. I had a great weekend, but uh, you know, and the, the best part of the week was that we won. But the second best thing that occurred was the, the, I'm gonna read that little portion. I said the second best gift at the Houston Peace and Justice Center Peacemaker Award dinner is a bit more personal. A young couple saw me and began speaking to me as if they had known me for a long time. They both listened to politics and right and told me they love how we give everyone a place to land with dignity. At least two dozen people stopped me and either thanked me for being a mouthpiece of logic, civility, and humanity or for being a listener. The one that touched me the most was a woman who told me that after reading my book, It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, she was able to communicate with her right-wing family with love and compassion. How can one not want to double down and keep working for the movement after knowing one is making a difference in some small way? And as I write this note, I received a call from Dr. Deborah Katz, a very kind supporter. She follows and reads our articles and newsletters. She told me, and my daughter was listening as she was talking to me, she told me she appreciated my work and that we are making a large difference. It's clear Dr. Katz was elated with the outcome of the midterms. It is clear that she read our last note that urged all to disregard the polls as we were certain that when the chips were down, our country would come through. We have a lot of work left to do. We must mend and extend our democracy to cover our economic system as well. Only then can we live in the utopia we are capable of becoming. I intend to do my part. I intend to do my part. All right. Anyway, let me play this for you because I haven't played it yet. Uh, this was uh, this was me introducing uh, our state representative, called the dean of the the dean of the house, the dean of the House of Representatives in Texas. I gave her an award from the Houston Peace and Justice Center. Check it out, and then we'll take it on the other side. Trying to introduce uh, someone who is not a stranger to you. Uh, somebody who has a profound talent at dealing with adults that are opposition or non compliant. I urge you to listen to his show, Politics Done Right, because I squirm in my seat because I'm often saying, tell a jerk to get off the radio. <laughs> but, but he does such a uh, job. He has a real faculty, he has a real talent. And he's also our technical guy. So let's give him a round of applause for Egberto Willis. Well, it's really all about a special lady. I only have two minutes, so I have to be quick. And her history could last 20 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. She has built her legacy from a strong principle of faith and unwavering defense of freedom and a staunch belief in fairness that exemplifies the American ideal that one person can make a difference. She received her high school diploma from Booker T. Washington High School in Houston and has a Bachelor's of Science in Biology from Texas Southern University, a Master's of Education from Purdue University, and a JD degree from Thurgood Marshall School of Law, and a Master's of Law in International Law from the University of Houston. She has worked tirelessly for Texas' most vulnerable populations, and relentlessly fights for increased the personal needs allowance that seniors in nursing homes are allowed to keep for purchasing items like mouthwash, cell phone minutes, and haircuts. She is the longest serving African American woman in Texas history and helped found the Texas Legislature's Black Caucus. This upcoming 88th session will be her 50th year of service to the state of Texas. Yeah, I know. 
You can't, you give your, if that's, that's serving the people. You got to give that. She has proven her commitment to those less fortunate with her tireless fight for equality and opportunity for all throughout her illustrious career. She has led the fight against human trafficking and successfully passed the James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Act, Texas first and only alimony law in the state's current minimum wage law, among many, many others. She's a woman's rights champion passing legislation require insurance coverage for 3D mammograms, anti-cancer oral medication, testing for the human papillomavirus, extended protections for victims of domestic violence, and increased access to certified sexual nurse examiners for victims sexual, of sexual assault. She plans to reintroduce legislation that creates the Brave Institute of Texas designed to award $3 billion in grants to public and private entities studying diseases of the brain such as Alzheimer's, autism, traumatic pain injuries, brain injuries, mental health disorders, multiple sclerosis, and much more. And having a daughter who's just had a stroke, thank you so kindly. She is a, she's an Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority member, but without further ado, I'm proud to introduce the Houston Peace and Justice Center Local Peacemaker Awardee, the Dean of the Texas House of Representatives, Texas Women's Hall of Famer, the Honorable Senora Representante Centronia Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, I am indeed humbled to receive this award. Uh, I was thinking as Delbert was introducing uh, I'm saying that was introductory to Marshall. Uh, I mean, there was a guy named Mr. Holloman. He was 91 years old, and this was just before Katrina. And he was helping me to try to get an increase in the personal care needs of personal in nursing homes. And you can just imagine you get a diaper in the morning and you get a diaper at night. But you may need a diaper change between those two times. And he was saying, Ms. Thompson, I guess we're going to have to wait the next session. And I said, it's repeated in this audience, though. But we're going to get that money. We needed $39 million. I called Governor Perry up. He called me back at my desk. So, Bernie, I just don't see how I can give you that. I said, well, I don't see how you can't give me that. <laughs> so we kept talking about it. And we kept talking about it a lot. Finally got him down to the point that he did. And he finally conceded that he would give us the money. I just pleaded with him. I just wore him out all that day. <laughs> After that happened, and we got the money, this guy was 91 years old. He always came to the Capitol to lobby. And he died knowing that he had accomplished a goal that he had worked so hard for. He was a member of the Silverham Legislators. Votes matter, election matter, but more importantly, people matter. And I got my life by something in the Bible that says, speak for those who are voices who cannot speak for themselves. And I consider myself a drum main wretch for those persons who are helpless, who cannot speak, who cannot stand up and fight, who cannot go to the Capitol, who cannot articulate a need that they have, a solution that they may have. And I am so interested uh, in continuing my fight. I'm 83 years old. I see my little sister sitting over there, Tammy Campbell. <laughs> But God willing, I'm ready to fight another 10 or 12 years. Thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for this award tonight. It is, it means a lot to me. And I am so humbled that you chose me for this award. Thank you. Texas State Representative Centronia Thompson, we recognize and acknowledge your place in history, 
as an unrelenting and tenacious force of nature. You advocate for equity and justice for those disaffected and disenfranchised. Springing from the core root of your advocacy is compassion for those forgotten, for those whose problems appear just too hard to solve, like the one you just mentioned, and for those whose voices are silenced or ignored. Your service keeps hope burning for a more just future. For all you do, both the seen and the unseen, thank you, thank you. Presented at HBJC Peacemaker Awards Dinner, Saturday, November 12, 2022, Bill Crozier, President, Houston Peace and Justice Center. Thank you. Uh, someone who is not a stranger. All right. I, I hope I, I hope you like that. Yes, Asha, she is 83 years old. She looks 50, and she says she intends to serve at least another 12 years in the Texas State Legislature. So, and you know, everybody knows her. All the all the governors, everybody. She is a dean of the the state legislature for a reason. Everybody knows her. Uh, once we went out to dinner and when the stories that she had to tell me that has occurred with so many of these governors from, uh, what's the woman governor that we had? Uh, Ann Richards to uh, Rick Perry to, I mean, she, she's told me so many stories about these, the, you know, things that have happened out there in Austin. And that's why I tell brother Eric Hayes, uh, he doesn't really know what he's talking about when he's talking about these laws that he talks about because I know how it gets done and I know who's to be blamed. So please, brother Eric, you do not know what you're talking about. All right, let's 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 continue here. Carl Cox says, modern calendar was developed by Muslims. Uh, Muslims also contributed to mes- medicine. So much of Western culture being the foundation for all good things. I mean, all cultures bring something to the fold. And it is silly when somebody comes and says, Western culture is the best that created. No, hell, the numbers that we use, what are what kind of numerals again? Arabic numbers? What are the numerals we use? Arabic numerals that we build our computation systems on? That's not Western culture. Uh, the, the rice separators, I mean, folks... The, the stories that are told, you know, critical race theory and critical thinking, right? Specifically, let's go to critical thinking. They don't want you to think critically because they can only control you and keep you within yourself, self-contained and hating the other. If they think you are the master class, the master something that everybody else wants to bite a piece of when the converse is actually the truth. The truth is that you, in, in creating this capitalist society, and why, I, why many of us abhor capitalism, is that it takes the knowledge and intellect of many others, and only a few are able to capitalize on it. It's not that we just want to be some kind of a communist socialist. Or, that's bull. I believe in bifurcated economies. But to sit down there and say Western culture create no Western culture did do nothing on its own, nothing on its own. And when brother a- uh, uh, Davenport says uh, what Davenport said here, he said something very important. Goodness, Eric Hayes, give up. Your, no, no. Uh, you, uh, let's see what else. That's not what I want to read. Something that Davenport said uh, because it was a good piece that I read while I was playing the thing here. Anyway, capitalism caused the need for abortion that banishes abortion. Uh, let's see. Deborah uh, Moyer says, our diversity is our strength. Seems like a lot don't know that. They don't want to know it because the plutocracy needs to keep us at each other's throats. That's why I'm going to love on all my right wingers in this house here. I, if, if I start to hate on the right wingers in our space here, I let them win. They won't win because I'm going to give all these people love. Punto y final. I am going to give people love. All right. Let's continue. Uh, Paraved, you have to wonder about the right obsession with Western culture. Dog whistle? Yes. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's see what else we got here. Deborah Morris says, our diversity is our strength. I read that one. Carl Cox says, modern calendar was developed by Muslims. I read that. Bridge MCP said, this one. America won because we showed up. Here's my personal note. During the Houston Peace and Just... Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. 
Uh, Robert Davenport said, be well, May. We'll take care of those appointments. Where's May? Haven't looked. Okay, May, I hope you're all okay. Uh, let's see. View this content on... Let's see what else we got here. Let's see what else we got here. Let's see what we got here. Para ver, para ver, para ver. Be well. Daniel Ledo said, they need to diminish the very culture that they have to thank for modern world. It was Western culture that ushered in globalism. Western culture that gave the people power and freedom. I could write volumes of fantastic things Western culture has done to improve the lives of other people. And uh, Why don't you give us what other cultures have done to, to do that? Western culture does not stand on its own. It would die by itself. And nobody here I see is diminishing Western culture. All right, let's see what else we got here. Daniel Ledo, West, uh, Western culture is a hodgepodge of remnants of stolen or copied from peoples they invaded, enslaved, and abused. Western history is a history of wars and violence. Religious bigotry was the most popular until they gained access to more diverse population. Does Western culture have value? Yes. Nothing about humanity is completely evil, but has done at least as much harm as good. Thank you for that thoughtful statement, Davenport. Uh, Carl Cox says, I'm not in favor of Muslim extremists. However, give our cultures, religions credit for modern technology. I agree. The Muslim religion is not the same as the extreme culture. That is true. Robert Davenport says, where, where would modern Western culture be without the zero? Thank you. Ever wonder why we use Arabic numeral? Ah, uh, you must have heard when I said that. Ashley says, the head is shining. Vo moisture. Hey, baby doll. I know, I know, I know. Uh, Daniel Ledo replying, yeah, so is every culture. So what? None of the other cultures have who have enslaved and abused, stole, and have copied throughout your pre-sliced bread. I don't understand what you're trying to say there. All right. Uh, Lee Grant says, uh, Davenport, I'm sure the world would be an idyllic paradise had there been no Western man. No, uh, the world would be the same. Somebody else would have picked up the mantra, Period. Egberto, Wiley's educators agree that critical thinking is a crucial skill for the 21st century, but it is harder to teach in some cultures than in others. The Burmese educational win argues that critical thinking has no long, no long, is, has a longer history in the East than many recognize. The British Council's Don Watson reports, according to the IBM, 90% of the data in the world was created in the last two years. Western culture is a hot, I read that one already, hodgepodge events, I wrote that one. Okay, let's see. Love of your country is okay to do. Of course, I don't have any problem with loving your country. Anyhow, let's go and let's hit number, uh, why did, why is it, if the Democrats lose the, the, the House of Representatives by under four votes, Mondale, Mondale James or Mondale Jones, We'll explain why. And it has also to do with Cuomo. Check this out. If the Democratic Party loses the House by more than four votes, I tell you, there are going to be some pretty upset uh, Democrats like uh, Mondaire Jones, who uh, got shifted into another district because the, the head of the DCCC decided that he wanted to run in a new district, which he uh, district which he ultimately lost. Check out how the characterization as said by uh, Mondaire, and then we'll take it on the other side. Twenty uncalled races right now, and uh, if Democrats can get fourteen of those. They keep the house. Yeah. On that note, uh, you are a Democrat from New York and you lost a primary. The map was um, a little bit messed up. I think that's probably a, an understatement. <laughs> you tweeted the word yikes after the man who ousted you from your seat, the uh, Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney, who happens to be the DCCC chair, lost his race. Did your Demo home state, did your home state Democrats kind of screw this up for the National Party? Redistricting in New York was an incompetent disaster. Uh, and it started, by the way, like many of the recent horrible things in New York, with a guy by the name of Andrew Cuomo. Who, Preach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, a lot of folks don't know that the reason we lost a congressional seat in New York State is because 89 more people did not complete the census. The governor at the time could have dispersed funds that the legislature had allocated for purposes of census completion. So this is Andrew Cuomo's fault? And then... It's because it's also the fault of federal and state legislators in New York. And then the legislature, which could have made the Independent Redistricting Commission's consensus building more efficient, did not put money behind its own ballot referendum that would have accomplished that. 
because they always intended to overrule the Independent Redistricting Commission with their supermajority vote. And as a result, uh, you've had the chair of the DCCC, uh, in coordination with Democratic leaders in Albany, uh, push through an aggressive gerrymander that the Court of Appeals struck down as blatantly illegal. Uh, and as a result, you have the nightmare scenario where yeah. uh, you, you have the, the House majority now uh, being deprived of Democrats potentially because of New York, a deeply blue state where we could have gotten it right in the way that so many other blue states did. Let me tell you, sometimes you have to wonder the common sense of those who are in power in, in, in the party. But again, the most important part about it is at least our people came out more so than not to vote to prevent the loss of this democracy, to prevent the loss of fascism being instituted almost officially in this country. So yeah, we have a few bad spots, but ultimately we should still be happy. Uh, your question, Bridge MCP, yes, they can install Trump as the leader of the House if they win. So in other words, if they can't get uh, if they cannot get somebody to to in, within themselves, they can say we want Trump to be the Speaker of the House. It does not have to be a member of the House. So Trump could become the Speaker of the House. And that would be I, I, I would love for them to do that. That would be funny. As hell. Anyway, let me do my ask and then we'll continue. Politics done right depends on you to keep doing what we do. What do we do? We make sure to keep, number one, the internet seeded with blogs and information to counter the right and to present what progressives represent for the be benefit of us all to everybody so that it's not misread, misled by any other entity. We make sure and populate that internet with blogs, with videos, with all these other things to make sure that we are informed and to counter everything that you normally hear that, that are lying at the right. We also make sure to create articles in, in magazines, articles in newspapers, all around the country to ensure, again, that our message gets out there. Last but not least, we also write books. As you see it, Class Warfare, the only re resort to right-wing doom, How to Make America Utopia, are two of the many books that I've written on these issues. So please support us in one of many ways. Numero uno, you can support us at PayPal, either one time or monthly. Go to politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. You can support us on Patreon. That is politicsdoneright.com slash Patreon. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. You can support us by becoming a part of our YouTube channel, going to politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube, or you can support us in many other forms that you can find at politicsdoneright.com slash support. Be sure to visit our store, politicsdoneright.com slash store, and get our books at politicsdoneright.com slash books. Hey, folks, don't forget also, um, my new book is out, or rather, the, um, I'm up to chapter 10. Um, I'm going to go on a rat, rat, because I got so many stories to tell about in, in this book. Uh, over the Thanksgiving holiday, I'm going to have a hell of a lot more chapters out, uh, assuming that I don't, something else doesn't happen, but... Uh, so here we go. Go to politicsandright.com slash tribulations, politicsandright.com slash tribulations, and check out my new book, which is called, and you know what? I always have to look it up. Tribulations of an Afro-Latino Caribbean man. Racism didn't stop my smile, hope, or journey forward. You know, I'm a positive guy. Check it out, please. It's, uh, you will not believe some of the stories from when I went to China to when I went to the, the, the different stuff doing, uh, the, the, com the different companies that I've had, PWL, Willie's Computer Software. The stories that I have to tell will dispel all those who think that somehow, somehow we live in a country that has always been or is fair. And uh, as I, as my title says, D despite I kept my smile, hope, and kept on moving forward. And this is a template not just me, but many others uh, have followed. Uh, and again, I think it, it's a, it, it, I, I try to write it in an enlightening, enlightened fashion. So check it out.
at politicsandright.com slash tribulations. And of course, check out all my other books, politicsandright.com slash books, and go to my store and get the, oh, I don't have one on. I have my Texas stuff on today. But get the Politics and Right stuff. And hey, Christmas is coming. You guys can kill two birds with one stone. You can go to our store and get a hat, a t-shirt, a, a, a hoodie or whatever for your loved ones. And as you're helping Politics Done Right, you're also giving a gift to, to one of your loved ones. So think about doing that for Christmas as well. I think it's a good idea. Uh, think about giving your, your family a, subscri- a Substack subscription. You know, the Substack that I just sent. You can, you can buy them a subscription to our Substack. You can buy them a subscription to our Medium. You can buy them a subscription to our YouTube. You know, we have a lot of ways in which you can help Politics Done Right move forward. So, I mean, please, 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 por favor, make sure we stay on air. I'm sure you guys enjoy the information that we talk about. Thank you, Deborah Moyer. She says when your book is printed, she'll get a copy. She need a new Kindle. I hear you, girlfriend. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. We have another video to show, and this one has to do with, um, this one has to do with, well, let me just play because I'll tell you what it has to do up front. Former advisor to Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, Scott Jennings, he was so smug. He was so right. Democrats were going to lose it all. They just made the mistake and put too much onto abortion. You guys are going to just hate it because you screwed up and now you want to talk about Social Security and all of that is what he said, right? And he was smug. He was so sure. And you have Obama uh, running for you now. You remember the last time Obama lost 65 votes? And by the way, uh, Obama Obama wasn't any good anyway. Do you really win anything with Obama? Karen reminded him, don't forget we didn't do badly in 2018 and Obama was out there helping us out too. But he continued with his smugness. I want you to listen to him. I want you to listen to Karen and now see what he has turned into. I mean, it's simply, he was simply wrong. The smug look of all of these guys are now gone. Check this out. You go back to 2010 and 2014, (laughs) amazing results when Barack Obama gets involved in a midterm. I think the fact that he's out there also tells you what we know about the election. Joe Biden can't be out there. So this is the only person they can put out. They have Democrats have bet everything on abortion, everything and with nine days to go. It's Social Security, it's Medicare, it's fear, it's and then and it finally it's we made a huge mess. And what are you going to do to clean it up? It's too late. It's not going to work. Yeah. So those are great talking points, Scott. But a couple of things. I do feel like the 2018 midterms when Barack Obama was out there went pretty well for Democrats. And we have seen president, uh, the president out there, the vice president. But here's the thing. A couple of things. No Democratic candidate is solely running on reproductive freedom. Let's be clear. And by the way, it is about freedom, which is part of the conversation about democracy. However, and Kristen knows this when it comes to polling, it's not not just about one issue. It's about the intensity that people feel about a cluster of issues. Black voters, number one issue, protecting voting rights. Number two issue, white supremacist violence. But above jobs and wages, above inflation in terms of top concerns, right? Because that impacts your ability to participate in the economy. For women, many women can hold two things at one time. Yes, she may be worried about the economy, but let's not forget, and I'll say it because even though I know some have been criticized, reproductive freedom is an economic issue for women. The majority of people who have abortions in this country already have children, and they're worried about, can I afford to have more children? So they can hold, the voters are holding more than one issue. I don't think anybody knows exactly what's going to be the one thing that's going to drive people and how they vote. I think if, if you're not talking about inflation and you haven't been talking about inflation, you ought to be super nervous. And that is virtually every Democrat in the country. Not true. Did you see how we ended that? Like, oh, you guys, it's all over. These guys were absolutely sure. Well, you know what happened, right? Uh, Americans are a lot smarter than we think. And when you put them up against the wall, which sometimes it drives us crazy as activists, why do you have to wait for things to get out of control before you exert your voting rights, before you exert the intellect we all know 
Americans have. Why do you wait? Why do you procrastinate? You know, the good thing about most of us is we understand that the American people are very, very smart. And ultimately, when they're about to hit that edge, they react. And you know who knew that? Karen Finney and a couple other pundits. The few pundits that didn't fall for the corporate attack, for the corporate state of uh, of reason that somehow this was going to be a red wave that somehow the democrats had just gone too far you know i love that woman uh, karen finney i had a few communications with her in the, in the past uh what was interesting is one uh, she she also had a s- severe uh stroke and it's amazing. She told her she she had insurance as well, and she told of the of what she had to go through, even though again she had insurance. She also um, spoke about uh, you notice how she still ha- she still has a slight uh, speech impediment, but if likely you don't know uh, that she had a stroke, most people won't even get at it. But the reason, like like I said, having a daughter who's had one and seeing all these. It, 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 it is it is always obvious to me right away that uh wow the amount of folks have strokes and hey I got to be careful myself because I have high blood pressure and I'm a pretty excitable kind of guy the only thing I hope I hope is going to save me is that I also do a lot of heavy heavy um, aerobics which I think I hope have my vessels a little bit stronger but you know how that goes uh my my con- I, look my gut tells me. Um, Norman, two fifteen, uh, two fifteen by two twenty. In other words, Republicans two twenty, uh, uh, Democrats two fifteen. That's what my gut tells me. My heart wants it to be two eighteen, two seventeen, meaning two eighteen Democrats, two seventeen Republicans. But I, that requires a miracle. But miracles happen every so often. Brief says, Egberto, Willis, for screen, what happened was no red wave we rode through. Yeah, okay, I'm going to put it on the screen, girlfriend. Let's go ahead. If Brief tells me to put something on the screen, it goes on the screen. It goes on the screen. It goes on the screen. Oh, Bridge, you are so bad. Bridge, you're so bad. Look at that. That's the red wave. <laughs> The donkey rode in on the red wave. Oh, my God. That wasn't nice. Bridge, that wasn't nice. You got it, Bridge MCP. The ability for a woman to control her own life, events, and health is an economic issue. It is. Bridge, you are no good. How dare you insult folks like that, Bridge? Actually, they were insulting us. They were talking about this red wave washing us all over and doing all of this. I'm glad we got to we got to have a little bit of fun with this stuff. Right. Love that graphic. I'm leaving it up, guys. Actually, I'm going to blow it up a bit. Let's blow it up a bit. Oops. Bridge, what kind of graphic you gave me that can't be blown up, man? What, what kind of graphic is that, Bridge? All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's see what Moyer says. He must not have paid any attention to anything Democrats or citizens said. We can often walk and chew gum at the same time, and women do it better than most. Why? Because biology was not kind to women. Whoever the supreme being was that defined, defined how we got male, female, and how biology works, again, don't put the blame where it belongs. Anyhow, I'm just playing around here because I'm out of... I got one more video, but I don't have enough time to play, so I'll play it mañana. We will play that other video mañana. But, man, you guys have had great commentary today. Deborah Moyer says, I love it. Robert Davenport says, love the graphic, LOL. Bree says, laughing my ass off. I could get worse Brooklyn in the house. And I know you could, Bridge. I've heard you, girl. All right, let's see. Did I miss anybody? Did I did I not introduce anybody? Did I miss saying hi to somebody? May would I hope I saluted you? I don't think I did, but I am now. Uh, who else is in the house that needs un poco de saludos? I see no one else that I missed. But, but, I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, I don't. I can't do the last video because we just simply run out of time. I'm not the best time manager, but this is y'all's damn show, man. If y'all start talking to me, you know I'm going to answer everything that you guys are asking me or telling me or stuff that you want me to put out there. Like Bridge today wanted that 
video out there. But anyhow, folks, please, I'm, I'm closing down the show now. So please go ahead and support us. Let me go ahead and pull up my support mechanism here so that I can give you a few more links. Please provide, please check out my book, uh, Tribulations, politicsandright.com slash tribulation. Please consider subscribing to our podcast. The paid version, if you, I know everybody subscribed to the regular one, paid version is at politicsandright.com slash podcast paid. That way you help, you know, we have, we have all these different ways for you to support us. Uh, Egberto, you need any, a New York t-shirt, gonna get you one. You send me the New York t-shirt, girl, I'll put it on just for you, babe. Just for you. All right, let's see what else we got here. What else we got here? Don't forget, get my books, politicsandright.com slash books. And you can provide us support at our PayPal at politicsandright.com slash PayPal. And don't forget, consider being a patron. And you know what? If you want, if you want my numbers to go up, do a little piece at Patreon, do a little piece at PayPal, do a little piece at YouTube. Hey, and then we have we have physical numbers to show for each of them. That would be the magic. Anyway, folks, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you love you. Thank you for being here. You know how I'm going to end this, baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.